You're watching a uh, presentation of women's college gymnastics here on ESPN Plus. As today, Yale University competes at home for the second time in the 2023 season as they welcome up Temple from Philadelphia. Hey everybody, how's it going? JJ Duke here with Paris McGee Jr., the former Ohio State gymnast in Paris. As we take a look at these two teams right now, we're in the month of February. At this time of the year, the big mistakes, you kind of want to get rid of those. Now it's a lot about fine tuning and really trying to make sure you keep all those tents as you want your team score to start rising up. Absolutely, this Yale team is strong. It is very strong this year led by one of their all-around gymnasts, Sarah, they can really put on an amazing show today. They would definitely be looking to go 24 for 24, meaning they want to hit every single routine that they compete today with their gymnasts. Yeah, you're looking at the junior from Georgia, Sarah Wilson, who is the Gymnastics East Conference Athlete of the Week, had an outstanding performance in the last competition for Yale. That was up at the University of New Hampshire, and currently Wilson second in the Gymnastics East Conference and all around at just over 38.6. She'll be the only athlete who will be competing the all around today, but as you were talking with Coach Andy Elise a little bit earlier, this is a team that has definitely gotten a bit deeper in their lineup, and you know, we might see a few changes and a few new names to the uh, rotation for each of the, uh, the four apparatus today. Yes, and speaking of new changes, I know that Temple will be really looking to explore their gymnasts on their different apparatuses. They have a very young team with eight freshmen and only two seniors. That is almost unheard of on the gymnastics side of sport. But again, they're just really looking to work on hitting all of their routines, just kind of going through that growing pains of having such a young team. Yeah, one of those younger athletes, she is a sophomore and is our athlete to watch today. Hannah Stallings, one of the two Stalling twin sisters at of Raleigh, North Carolina. Hannah not doing the all around, which something that she has been doing pretty much all season long up until this point. In fact, averaging a 38.35, just doing the two events here today. But she did have a career high scores in both the bars and the beam last week. And, you know, as you said, a lot of young athletes, lot, uh, eight freshmen, six more sophomores, just the one senior and the one grad student. So it's very much going to be a youth enterprise down in Philly. It will be. So they're just going to be looking to get experience here in this competition. And it's definitely going to be extremely exciting, very exhilarating. And, hey, I'm just excited to see some great gymnastics today. Josh Nelson in his fifth season at the helm of this program. This is someone that has come to Temple and basically exudes excellence. He has won three championships since he has taken over twice in the ECAC. And then the first time that Temple was in the uh, East Atlantic Gymnastics League. They won back in 2021. Andy Lease, last year's Gymnastic East Coach of the Year. And yeah, while there was some changes due to graduation, of course, with the rotations for this season, but still, I mean, this is going to be one of the teams to beat in the conference, and he is the man with the plan. Again, Andy has done a phenomenal job since becoming head coach. And he's ready to take on this competition. You see him here huddling with his vault rotation kind of giving them the last bit of encouragement before getting this meet kicked off. This meet today for Yale, as we said, their second home meet of the season, but also a very important meet as well. It's my cause, my ribbon meet. As today, each Yale gymnast is going to be supporting a cause that they feel strongly about. Each will be wearing a colored ribbon associated with the cause that they're supporting. We'll be flashing each one as each gymnast competes here today. But for more information and a, you know, a number of great links uh, that you can find online about each cause that all the athletes are supporting, you head over to YaleBulldogs.com. And we're going to get it started here with the uh, aforementioned Sarah Wilson. And that was a pretty good vault. She did look as if she kind of got a little close to the table. But again, that's a great strong lead off vault. Eryuchenko, tuck full twist. Small hop on that landing. Wilson has been averaging a 9.68 on the vault this season. Here's second look at that vault. A little short, but hey, she does phenomenally. And well. now we, we head over to Madison Brooks, the senior from Gainesville, Florida, leading it off on bars. 
Here she is getting up for that dismount on Byers. They're going to be really working on hitting that handstand, Coach Shaw said, before the competition takes a step forward. But again, that's a great leadoff routine on Byers. You really just want your gymnasts just to be able to go up, hit a safe, clean routine that the rest of the girls can build off of as the competition goes along. Yeah, you saw on the bottom of your screen a moment ago the points of emphasis that the judges are going to be looking at, especially hitting that 90 degree vertical on handstands. That is where you can lose a lot of tents, as well as making sure to get that early stick. Absolutely, handstands are critical on the uneven bars in gymnastics. And again, Coach Josh said that he's really going to be looking for those perfect handstands when it comes to his team on bars. Oren Avia, the sophomore from Woodbridge, Connecticut, will get us the second Yale vault. See, today she is supporting spinal cord and brain injury. And again, all the causes that the Yale gymnasts will be representing on YaleBulldogs.com. And that's a beautiful vault, your chinkle half. She did look as if she bent her knees a little early. I'm not sure what the judges would do with that, whether they will look at it as a Yurchenko tuck half or a ladle half. Nonetheless, she has huge power. Here's another look at that vault. Nice block. She, you can kind of see she does tuck a little early, but again, she lands on her feet, takes a small hop forward, and Yale's doing a great job on this rotation on vault. Now, I think the big question, Paris, what do you deem that? Is that a small hop or a large hop? Because I know that could be at least two tenths of a difference. It could be. I would personally, you know, it's almost like a medium-sized hop, a um, little bit closer on the smaller side. Not anything that the judges would take too much off of. Madison Durunda, the sophomore from Waterford, Connecticut, not too far away from here in New Haven, has competed on the bars in all four meets for Temple this season. Temple, interestingly enough, didn't compete at all last week. Their last meet was at home the first time at McGonagall Hall, where they posted a team's second high, 193.65. There's the great packs also down to the low bars. She is working this bar routine. Nice handstand position, open shoulders on that blindfold to immediate double tuck, small hop forward. That's a big positive for Madison who had just a 9-2 one week ago. So, you know, it's never easy to come back from a fall, but that is a big, big bonus there for Madison. Another look at that dismount, small hop forward. Make sure she's nice and square for those judges. Amy Teich, the senior and captain for this Yale team out of the state of Arizona, has competed on vault every meet for the Bulldogs this season. Last week, though, a 9-3-5. She's gone. Teich as high as a 9-6-5. She's going to look to score another big 9-6-5, hopefully today, possibly even higher. Ah, and she just lands a little short. That is one of the more difficult vaults that we will see today, your chanko full twist. And that's a fall that Yale will be hoping to not count thus far as Wilson and Abiad were able to find it to the feet. Still though, three more gymnasts to go. If you're unfamiliar with women's college gymnastics scoring, it'll be six athletes up, five scores will count. We'll also see a number of exhibition vaults on either team, or actually I should say exhibition performances for either team throughout today. Swing it back over to the junior from Georgia. It's Serena Whalen, who like her teammate just before Madison Durunda, is pretty much kind of a, a bars specialist. Averaging a 9.775, which is still very early on in the season. That's a pretty high score. That is a high score. We are early on in the season, so for her to be scoring 9.775, close to that 9.8, it's pretty big. Yeah, she's going as high as a 9.825 and already bettering her season best from last year in her sophomore campaign with a 9.775. They're having a brief pause on the Temple side. I think they're having a question about one of the scores. As they're starting to come in here, we'll keep you guys updated as we go, as we get the live, stores, uh, live scores coming in at the same time. But it'll be over again to Serena Whalen. As a gymnast, it's so hard to wait. But hey, here she is. 
the judges are ready for her and she's gonna get started. Scored at that mark, a 9-7-7-5 in her last meet, which a meet also included Bridgeport, Cornell, and LIU, two of the three teams that Yale will be seeing in the gymnastics East championship meet in a, just a little over a month's time. This is a beautiful bar routine. She's working those handstands just like that one. Open shoulders, here she is, game for a huge dismount. Full twisting double back, small hop forward. That is why she is the bar specialist. That was a great routine. She definitely attacked those hands and something that head coach Josh will be looking for. Here's another look at that dismount. Full twisting double back and just takes a small hop forward. But that's gonna definitely score very big. That is gonna be a big score as Yale. Now Reagan Walker on the vault. <laughs> and that was great. Reagan is a She's, she is, in my opinion, the best vaulter on Yale. She's extremely powerful. She's so clean in the air, and she knows what she's doing from start to finish. <laughs> you can see her teammates putting on the crown for her after that huge vault. And also a picks up as well after Teich wasn't able to land her vault. Reagan Walker has gone as high as a 9.75 this season. That might be even pushing close to a 9.8 as well. Not too much to take away from that. It could be. You kind of see she did kind of drift a little to the side, which means she was a little early in her hurdle. But again, the judges don't see the, they don't see much of that. Yeah, we, um, as they don't see the special view that we get to see. We get the power to slow it yes, down in do. the back. Is now we you're going to look at Hannah Stallings as we highlight at the top of the show. One of the two twin sisters born just one minute apart of each other. As we'll see Sarah up after this. But Hannah had a big mark last week on the bars with a 9875. Ooh, and she caught a little close to that bar. The judges will deduct from that. But she is extremely clean. With a shorter swing, kind of powers through. Here she is getting up for another huge dismount. And that is a beautiful full twisting double back, sky high in the air, found that landing, and she's stuck. That is the stuck dismount that not only the judges were looking for, but I was looking for. Here's another look at that beautiful landing, chest upright, and you can see her team is excited. Building off a career high a week and a go. Whoa, <laughs> that was huge from the first year freshman Gigi. Coach Andy did say that she is a huge vaulter for the team. And I know that I said that Reagan is the best vaulter, but I think Gigi was giving Reagan a run for her money on that one. That was huge. The best vault of the day so far. It certainly shows a first year coming into Gymnastics East and already being fourth best in the conference in vault average at a 9.75 believe it fair to say competing that from a 10-0 start value or hey or it was either 10-0 or 9-9-5 but that looked pretty pretty crisp that was very crisp i believe it starts at a 9-9-5 but again that you, you you honestly can't take much off of that with the exception of the small hop strong block nice tight body in the air and she finds that landing they're seeing the scores starting to come in here and the Stallings sisters are starting to pass the baton and actually really that started back with Madison Brooks getting an opening stick and now it goes over to Sarah Stallings who also very, very good on the bars has gone as high as a 9.875 this year. Beautiful Pike Yeager. She has an exceptional toe point, just beautiful lines as you see she traveled to that low bar hitting that handstand, strong execution. Nice blindfold over the bar, so immediate tuck dismount and another stick. Temple is performing extremely well on the uneven bars. They are putting on the pressure on Yale in this competition. Here's another look at that beautiful blindfold to immediate double tuck dismount. Stuck landing, beautiful. And this is the anchor here for Yale, the junior from Austin, Texas, Sherry Wong. Wong, who's average, or has gone as high as a 9.775 this year. That is another year chancle full. She was a little short of that landing. She does have to take a big hop to the side. And because she steps out of bounds, that will be a bigger deduction. Because Yale, now they're looking like possibly it's either going to be Amy Teich's 8.875 or maybe perhaps. It's definitely, you see those two lines, by the way, the landing zone. 
believe it's a step out there. It's a .5 deduction. So yes. that's it's going to be a low score that Yale's going to have to count in this rotation. We send it back to Temple and their anchor, Ashley Glenn, a freshman from Delaware. And to have a freshman anchoring your lineup squad is pretty huge. And also, this is her first competition on bars this season, season was a vault specialist for the first three meets for the Owls. We knew that head coach Josh Nielsen was going to be changing some things up in his lineup to get more experience and more reps. Well, how's this for your first time on bars this season? Hey, I mean, she's exceptional. Look, just look at her lines. The legs are straight. The toes are pointed. Beautiful open shoulders. Great blindfold. This is why she's anchoring. Can she stick? And she takes a small hop back. But hey, that was a huge routine for the freshman. Anchoring such a strong bar lineup. Again, here's a look at that double tuck dismount. Takes a small hop backwards. But her first time on the bars this season, that, that's pretty huge. And Temple, the last time they competed a couple of weeks ago, it's a 48-2-5 on bars. You can say this mark is probably going to blow that right out of the water. As this is an exhibition routine for the first year, Megan Bruick. Oh, and she sits it down. But I must say that this vault that she just performed is extremely hard, much harder from that round off entry vault that we properly see in women's college gymnastics with this vault, she really has to get a sense of power that you know, you, you're not able to get you know, when you have the round off entry vault. So again, she's a power gymnast and I just can't wait to see her land that on her feet very soon. There'll be one more exhibition routine to come now for Temple. Brooke Donabedian is gonna get an extra go about because actually she's been a exclusive beam and floor specialist, but trying to work her back onto the bars where she competed regularly for Temple last year. Gone as high as a 9-8. As Temple, they have experienced a few athletes and unavailabilities on their usual apparatus, at least from last year to this year, but slowly working them back in. Woo, and that was a huge Gager, Gager disc release. You don't see that too often on the women's side in college gymnastics. Temple, they really have beautiful lines on the uneven bar. Such a strong exhibition routine. Well, remember when I said blowing that mark last week out of the water? Yeah, they've done over a half point better. Temple of 48.775. They drop Madison Brooks's 9.575. And they're led by Glynn's and Sarah Stallings 9.825. A, a team that struggled a week ago on that. That is a much better score. Yale on the vault of 48-125, which even then is above their season average, where they did have to count one fall or one big step out. That's not too bad, all things considered. That is an and honestly, I'm not worried about this Yale team because vault is one of their struggling events. They do move on to the uneven bars where they are extremely strong. And then they go to the balance beam where they're even stronger. So Temple might have a lead, but hey, Yale can definitely, and possibly will definitely catch up. Amy Teich's 8.875 8, was dropped. Sherry Wong's actually a, a 9.425, so not all bad, all things considered. We'll step aside after rotation one, Temple. Welcome back inside John J. Lee Amphitheater on the campus of Yale University, J.J. Duke, Paris McGee Jr. in Paris. As we started that first rotation off, Temple, they basically passed the baton from one to the next, one of their best bar scores of the season. Yale, not too bad on the vault on their own either. Yeah, Yale did struggle, but again, it isn't one of the stronger events that do move on to the uneven bars, which I'm extremely excited to see. They are very strong at this event, and this is where they're going to close that gap that Temple has on them in this competition. Yeah, Temple will move to the vault where at this season, it's been okay for them. It hasn't been the big marks that they saw from a season ago, but as we've already seen, there's been a lot of changes in their lineup, so perhaps for Coach Josh Nielsen, just carry it on from the bars to the next event. Absolutely, they're just gonna wanna continue that momentum. They started very strong on the uneven bars. They're moving on to the vault, where they just wanna continue to build stronger teams. Absolutely, and we'll look forward to that next rotation in just a second here. Yale goes to the bars, Temple on the vault, when we come back. 
An outstanding first rotation on the bars for Temple, a 48-7-7-5, only just a tenth off their season best. You're seeing some of the best moments from that first rotation. Ashley Glynn and Sarah Stallings leading the way with a 9-8-2-5. Uh, Paris, that was just about as consistent as you ever want, as now it's going to be all about building that difficulty the rest of the way. Right. They started off strong on uneven bars. Now let's see if they can continue this momentum on the vault. For Yale on the vault, a 48-1-2-5, the best vault of the bunch. Reagan Walker's 9-7-2-5. Also, Oren Aviad with a 9-6-7-5. Vault was very surprising for me because they did perform not only bigger vaults than they did in the last competition, but they did them very well. Here's another look at Reagan's vault. Huge amplitude, small step forward. But, hey, now they move on to the stronger even event than even bars and they're definitely going to score big here on the bars this season the bulldogs a gymnastics east conference best average of 48 4 8 1. in terms of how the season has gone in yale's conference thus far it's penn that has been leading the way they have posted a season high in every apparatus as well as the team scored a 195 025 but the team bars high at 49 075 Yale has that number in their pocket. They actually set a new program record last year with a 49-175 as the first vault underway. That is Renee Shugman getting us going for Temple. Shugman has gone as high as a 9-7 this year. Taking another look at this vault, Ryuchenko half twist. Hannah pikes down as she lands, takes a step back. But she lands on her feet, and again, you just want your first gymnast that competes on that event to simply perform well that your team can definitely build off of as the competition continues. Yeah, we'll see Shugman heavily on the beam and floor as we go through the rest of the year. As Aviad will go on the bars now after competing a 9-6-7-5 on the vault. Very consistent this year. Her average and her high right around a 9.675. Nice to catch a beautiful handstand position. Swings tight as she goes down to the low bar. Now here she is gearing up for that dismount. Little short of that handstand, but beautiful blind pull over on top of the bars. Two, I think, what was an immediate stuck dismount. <laughs> That's a big start for Yale. I know you said it wasn't the worst, wasn't the best vault, but sometimes as an athlete, you can let things carry over from one event to the other. When you start off an event on a good note, that just, just it goes to the rest of the team. That was such a strong team. Back over to the vault for Temple, Anna Hill. And a beautiful Yurchenko full, small hop on that landing, but she's so tight in the air and executes that vault very well, and definitely what the judges are looking for. And that's another athlete competing on an event for the first time this season as a sophomore from Maryland had only been competing on floor up until today. Hey, if that's your first vault this season, that's pretty huge. Again, we're going to be saying that a lot about a lot of different Temple athletes. As we were talking before the meet Paris, this is a very big roster, but they can get scores to count from just about everybody on the roster this year. Someone that you're always going to get a score or two or probably four to count is Sarah Wilson, who goes on the bars. Gone as high as a 9.825 this year. Beautiful hands in position. Strong to Takajev to immediate. Down to that low bar. Now here she is back up on that high bar. Beautiful blindfold right up to that handstand. Can she stick? And she does. Oh, I don't know if they just would give it to her. She actually did take. A quick step back, but I call it the Horkina stick. You know, as soon as you land, just turn to that judge and salute. Here's another look. And, hey, the judges might give it to her. These are seeing Sarah Wilson after a 9-8 last week in the bars. We just had the vault of Charlie Boehner. Another athlete competing, in fact, not only just for the first time this season, that was her first competitive event at all this season. 
You know, I saw her in warm-up, and she gets some huge height off that table. The freshman from Milton, Georgia. Again, as we're seeing a lot of new names coming through for this Temple team this weekend. Just understanding how deep you can be in your team. As Gigi Sabatini will compete now. Sabatini rocked the vault earlier, a 9.725. Aviat score, a 9.625, by the way. Anna Hill, a 9.8. Not too bad for your first vault of the season. <laughs> that, that, that was huge. She's working through this bar routine very well. A little over on that blindfold, but another stuck dismount. Like I said, the uneven bars is a strong event for Yale, so they are definitely going to be closing the gap that Temple has in this competition. Another look at that dismount. Double tuck, a short stick, huge. Mackenzie Aresta, the junior from New Jersey on the vault. Look oh. at that. And she sticks that vault. It is not easy to stick a vault. But I think she was ready for that. His, her head coach, Coach Josh, he said that this team is hungry. They are hungry to win. They are hungry to do what they do in practice, and that is execute well. Here's another look at that vault. Stronger chankle fold. Does twist a little early, but she finds that landing. That's a big mark. Uh, Temple is hoping to shoot their number on vault higher. Has she won as best as a 9-7 earlier this season. Yale back over to them. Sherry Wong on the bars. Sarah Wilson a 9-8. That's a good score for her. In fact, a little above her usual season average. Huge straddle Jaeger. A little short of that Hanson, but she makes it up right there. Sherry is so consistent on this event. Here she is getting up for a huge dismount. Oh, I think she was trying to stick it, but she does take a step forward. She swings with so much power. Just loading those giants up for that huge dismount. Another full twisting double back, small step on the on the landing. Madison Brooks at a nine, five, seven, five in the bars earlier, now on the vault. And another huge vault. She is excited, and she should be. The amplitude, the height that she gets off the table is huge. And what I love about her vault the most is that she takes her time to twist. She sets, gets off that table, and then wraps for that full. Temple's been averaging a 48-425 in the vault this season. They've already got a couple of big numbers. Hills, 9-8. Charlie Boehner's 9-7-5. Again, her first ever competition. Uh, for Temple. As Yale gonna go back over, Reagan Walker. Reagan always another person that's gonna be consistent on this event. Usually expect her around a nine, seven, seven, five, nine, eight. I'm not biased, but I am biased. Reagan is by far I think the best bar worker in this competition. And she's Beautiful gonna, line. She's gonna look for a bounce back, by the way. Last week a fall, a 9175. Beautiful hands in position. I mean, she just swings with so much elegance, so much grace, but power. A little short of that hands in, but she will make it up with this huge double ale dismount. Can she stick? Oh, and she takes a step back. But that was such a good routine. She's so clean. She is just so clean. I mean, just. It's a coach's dream to have a gymnast like Reagan on your team. She's clean, she's consistent, has so much grace and power. A beautiful gymnast to watch. Ashley Glynn trying to complete what has been a very solid bar vault rotation for Temple. Whoa, oh, and she just sits it down. I think the good news is for Temple, Paris, we're waiting on some of the other scores to come in, that being from uh, Aresta and Brooks, but they're not going to have to worry about counting that fall. No, they won't, but I must say that this vault is huge. It is the only 10-0 start value in this competition. She doesn't do a half twist. She doesn't do a full twist, but she does a one and a half twist. 
almost a full twist more than most gymnasts in this competition. Caitlin Henry, who is a bars specialist, scored a season high last week at New Hampshire, 9.75. See again with this week's meet for Yale being the My Cause, My Ribbon. Henry supporting pancreatic cancer. And for more information, go to YaleBulldogs.com as every member of the Bulldogs today representing a different cause that is special to them. Little leg separation that she does catches at release. Now that is the handstand that you are looking for. Nice and on top of the bar. Another strong handstand. Here she is getting up for that dismount. And a double leg, she does pike it, but that is a great routine. You can see she has a knee brace on. She is coming back from a ACL tear. So it is beautiful to see her back in competition. Another look at that double leg out. She uses the sting mat for an extra, extra bit of cushion. Temple, what a vault for them. A new season best as a team, and 48-7-2-5. Yale will wait for the score of Henry, and we'll tell you all about it after this, as we're halfway home here in this dual meet between Temple and Yale, back in a moment. Between Temple and Yale, in fact, the first time that these two teams have met in a dual competition since 2011. They were at one point league rivals in the ECAC, but Temple a season high 48.725 on the vault, and for Yale a solid 48.5. We're still waiting on Caitlin Henry's score, by the way, so that number may slightly tick up as the teams will head over to the beam and the vault. In addition to this being the My Ribbon, My Cause meet here for Yale Gymnastics. Yale Athletics across the board are celebrating Black History Month as on this day back in February, or excuse me, back in 1999, former president of the United States, well now former, then even before, it was a dream for him <laughs> that he of course reached. Barack Obama first made history in national headlines when he was elected the first African American named president of the Harvard Law Review and of course, not too, too long after that, he became the president of the United States. We just got that score for Caitlin Henry. It was a 9-5-2-5. That score will not be part of the team score. A solid rotation nonetheless. Temple with a new high, Anna Hills, 9-8. She'll win the vault and also helping Temple to their best vault score of the season. It'll be the Bulldogs on the beam, the Owls on the floor. When we come halfway through this meet here between Temple and Yale, the Owls, they counted four scores better than a 9.75 on the vault led by Anna's, Anna Hill's outstanding 9.8. For Yale on the bars, solid, not spectacular by any stretch, but it's a score that they will take. They're being consistent on the afternoon and kind of hanging right around their expected score thus far, but also, Paris, as we head to the third rotation, this is where things kind of become interesting. We were speaking earlier, the floor for pretty much the entire nation, unless you're the top five teams, the floor has been scoring a lot lower than usual. Yes, it has been, and that is a result of some of the new – rules and deductions that a lot of these gymnasts are facing this season. There are some changes and now a lot of these gymnasts are having to change things in terms of their tumbling, uh, how they land, where their chest is, when they land. And these floor routines too score big. Yeah, for Temple, they're last in the East Atlantic Gymnast Gymnastics League with an average of 48 or 47, 9, 5, 8. Last year, they were scoring close to 49. I mean, that, you know, now all of a sudden you're trying to pick back up a point and a half from what you expected from last year with most of the team returning. Exactly. Speaking with head coach Josh before the competition, he said that on floor they are replacing half of the starting team. So this is almost a brand new team for Temple on floor. And even more, most of the gymnasts competing are freshmen. 
Hanna Strauss is going to get Yale started on the beam, the first year from California. And we'll see her both on the beam and the floor later on. Actually, no, excuse me, she's only, yeah, no, she's third on the floor, so having a chat with first season assistant coach Laura Burns. I love Hannah on this event. I was watching her in warm up and she reminds me of the gymnasts in the 90s, from the 90s era, who I consider to be the definition of artistic gymnastics. She's so elegant, so petite, but mighty. And that's what I love about her and her gymnastics. Well, she can go big on the beam as well. She hits her first acro series at 9775 um, on the beam in the meet against North Carolina, where the Yale Bulldogs scored a season best 194 25. Beautiful combo. Front area to immediate split jump. She absolutely takes her time. She goes through every mo every movement, doesn't rush a single skill, and just accentuates everything she does. She will be performing one of the hardest dismounts in the entire competition. And she sticks it. That was a huge two back handspring to a double full. I mean, the momentum starts. You get a first year throwing up the lead off on beam, and all she does is hit. Another look at that dismount. She sticks it perfectly. And she's only a freshman. Leading off the floor for Temple, the sophomore out of Maryland, Summer Rusky. Rusky, who will compete on floor pretty much all season long for the Owls, has gone as high as a 9.85. And that was a career high in their last meet. Great opening pass. She does step out of bounds in her double back. The floor exercise of women's college gymnastics is one of those events, events that really gets the crowd and the judges on their feet. It is, but of course, it's that road mentality as well. You'll get polite applause from a home meet for the, oppo uh, for the opponents, but you have to create that own energy as well. You do, and that's where the teammates come in at. You can see her teammates cheering and dancing with her on the side. And they get tested throughout the year, Paris. So you got to make sure that you know not only your own routine, but everybody else's floor as well. Absolutely. Rusky averaging on the floor of the season a 9.792. You know this is a big number from the leadoff spot. And that was a great last pass. She did get into that floor for that double pike, but she holds on to it. Takes that step back and finishes very strong. Great leadoff routine on floor for Temple. And it's not always that you get the huge numbers coming from the leadoff swap, but Rusky is always basically you're counting or scoring maybe one of the top two or three on the team that you'll see. A good start for Temple on the floor, which again has been a struggle spot for them this year as we head back over to the beam. Sarah Wilson, who, by the way, is the only athlete in today's meet that will be competing the all-around, off to, once again, a very solid start. Sarah is a huge gymnast for Yale, who competes all-around in just about every competition. She falls off the beam and arguably one of the hardest skills in the competition, a front tuck. Extremely difficult because she loses sight, but she is rebounding very well. It's gonna be now tough on the rest of that Yale beam team to go hit four for four here because you expect to count Sarah Wilson's score who has gone as best as a 9.75 this year. Strong acro series back handsome to a layout step out but so important as well for her just to finish as strong as Absolutely. she started. 
Absolutely, that's one of the most important things to do as a gymnast when you do falter. And she's finishing so strong. That was such a great combination. Love that fun choreography here. She is going up for her dismount. And a strong finish for Sarah. I know she's disappointed, but Balance Beam is a very strong event for this team, and I know that the other gymnasts can focus and perform well to put up big numbers. Well, got off to a good start with Hannah Strauss's 9-7. An athlete who actually averages a little bit below that, so already off to a better start than normal. But yeah, certainly it's going to be now pick the next member up and you go again if you're Yale, as we'll swing back over to the floor. And it'll be the grad student, the lone grad student on this Temple team, Juliana Rowland out of Lumberton, New Jersey, who actually started her gymnastics career in the Nutmeg State, but for the University of Bridgeport, was an outstanding competitor for the Purple Knights, but then transferred to Temple uh, during the COVID season. Has been a absolute star for Josh Nelson's team as Roland last year competed in the NCAA regionals on vault. She's done that over the last couple of years and was also uh, all Eastern Atlantic Gymnastics League First team on the floor, second team on the beam, multi-tournament honors as they honor both the regular and the postseason as well. As we're still waiting on the score for Summer Rusky to come in. You talked about earlier, Paris, about having those long pauses. You kind of want to you expect you take that deep breath, you go, and 30 seconds later, you still have not been given the green flag. But I like what Juliana did. She kind of reset herself before stepping back on the floor. Goes through the same routine, and away she goes. Here she is getting up for that first pass, a strong double pike. She has such a fun routine with such intricate choreography. You know, she may just stand at four foot 10 inch, but she packs a lot of power into her tumbling passes. She's tiny but mighty. Another strong Lail Lail pass. Getting ready for that last pass. Her teammates are cheering, just shouting for her to finish strong. And she does a little short of that double back, but she lands it on her feet. And I love the ending. Such a beautiful routine, so fun. I mean, I just want to take this headset off and go out there with her, you know? I mean, no one's holding you back. <laughs> hey. No, but that's a great fight from Juliana as well, because as you said, very short on the landing on that last pass. Of course, you know, 90 seconds of absolute conditioning to go through a floor exercise routine. And that was her first pass, absolute stick, and just firing her team up as well. Here is that short landing that she had on her last. But as you said, Paris, a really good fight to keep that, on the, uh, keep that to her feet as we go back over to the beam now for Claire Q, the sophomore from Fremont, California. And she looks confident on this event. Strong acro series. And that huge sheep jump, that is extremely difficult. The hardest jump throughout the competition. She is fighting to stay on the balance beam in this routine. And this is the Yale gymnastics that I'm used to seeing. They are fighters. 
clean gymnasts who know how to attack routines and put up great scores. And again, this is coming after Sarah Wilson's fall, but that's exactly <laughs> how you <laughs> respond. Out. You can see Coach Andy just so relieved. That is such a strong routine, oh my gosh. To put up such a big set like that after a fall, that's huge. But this is the caliber that Yale has on this event. So hey, I'm not surprised. I mean, she's stepping up on the beam as well. Just competed on the event only a handful of times last year. And now another one of the athletes that are expected to put up those consistent numbers. The first score for Temple coming in for Summer Rusky in 9525. I personally thought that might have been a little higher than that. And I was clicking through on our stats, and yeah, the two judges had a pretty big gap on their scores, which is why we had the long delay before Juliana Rowland. But now Boehner, who had a 975 in her first event on the vault. Charlie, who had not competed in any meet for Temple in her first season up until today, just trying to keep that momentum going to the floor. And a difficult front double twist. But I love about these routines is that you're really allowed to see these girls' personality from their music choice to their choreography. They go out there and they put on a show. Just a freshman, but she has such a bright future on this event, performing so strong. Back one and a half punch front lay. And another good routine from Temple. Yeah, that's a great routine from Charlie Boehner. Again, the freshman from Milton, Georgia, in her first competition of her collegiate career. Another look at that difficult front double twist, which is difficult because as she's coming to land, she's not able to see the ground like she is when she's back tumbling here. Send it over now to the beam to last year's U.S. Collegiate Gymnastics All-American on the beam. That's Emma Mangia Capri, the junior from Doylestown, PA. Competed on the beam every meet last season. Gone as high as a 9.8. And she is laser focused. Great aqua series. Beautiful triple leap jump series. And another difficult combination front area. It's not an easy skill. And a strong dismount. It's another stick for Yale, which comes off of a new career high for Claire Q, who just put in a 9-8. The best mark thus far for the Bulldogs. And that's not too far behind there. It's not in that balance beam routine that we just saw. Just might be close to that 9-8. Madison Darunda now on the floor, the sophomore from Waterford, Connecticut. Her high is a 9-5-5 on floor. Paris, interesting one by the way, Juliana Rowland scored a 9.05. I didn't see her fall. I know she took, she was short on her last tumbling pass landing, but that seems awfully low. I would have to agree that is somewhat low, I think, with these new requirements on the floor. A lot of these gymnasts are having to perform more, and sometimes that includes another pass. She did perform two passes compared to some other gymnasts who performed three. 
So now Temple are hoping to not count that score as Darunda need to put up a big number here. Best mark for Temple thus far on the floor. Charlie Boehner's 975. Now that was a strong pass. Lay punch to a Rudy. Well, I think with that routine, Temple right back on track on the floor. Absolutely. Again, these floor scores are ranging quite wildly, I must say. You know, but it's so interesting what these judges are taking off and what they see. There's another look at that big double back pass. And her last pass, lay punch, Rudy. Great routine for Temple. Back to the beam. Riley Meeks, the senior from Michigan. Competed on the beam in all but one meet last year. Has competed on the beam every meet this year and had a season best against North Carolina of a 9-8. We'll see Riley again in the same position in the lineup on the floor, and that's great fight there to stay on. Absolutely, yeah, they can't afford to have any more falls, so she's fighting throughout this routine to stay on and perform well. Yale currently would be counting Sarah Wilson's fall in a 9.05. Still waiting on the score from the most recent Emma Mangia Capri's routine. And that is a beautiful combination series. She's so confident and strong at this event and executes very well. And a strong finish. Beautiful dismount. If I'm thinking right, Paris, it's five for five, though, on sticks for Yale, and they're not giving up any extra tents they're when not, put it to the mat. They are fighting in this rotation performing Arguably one of their best beam rotations this season. And Yale, who has gone as high on the beam as a 48-7-7-5, know that they might have a way back into this dual meet if they can put one more hit. There's Renee Shugman now, a junior from Smithtown, New York, going. She is one of the big scores expected to count here for Temple. Her season best for Shugman, a 9-8-5, Came in the last meet. And a great opening pass. Back one and a half punch front fold. That's not quite easy to do. You see many gymnasts just do a simple layout out of that back one and a half, but she adds another fold to it. And again, playing to her team there during the choreography. Never easy, of course, when you're on the road. Might not be like SEC, you know, Friday Night Heights where you're going up against 14,000 in the crowd, but still trying to create that good energy. And her team's giving it right back to her. Here she's gonna go for that last pass. A beautiful double pike. <laughs> this is gonna score huge. By far the best flurry team from this Temple squad today. And it's going to come right after Madison Durunda's 9675. Of course, you have Boehner's 975 and Summer Rusky's 9525. Still Juliana Rowland's 905, still standing on the table right now. But we're heading to the anchors for both teams. Reagan Walker to go now for Yale. Reagan, who expected to always put together big numbers for Yale. Well, across the board, really, in the three events that she competes. Beam high a couple of weeks ago at North Carolina. Reagan is exceptional on this event. She has so much, oh, and she just falls off. Which means now Yale is going to have to count Sarah Wilson's 9.05 unless Reagan can compete the rest of this cleanly. You know, she's such a clean gymnast, and 
What I love about her the most is that she takes her time on every event that she competes. Strong lines, beautiful toe point, great execution. So this will be officially the first fall that Yale have to count on the day. Well, Sherry Wong's vault was at a 9.425. She did have a long step out of the, the lane lines. But this is the first fall. Still Yale, a chance to put together a big number, though, regardless of that. Here's that new Jisma that she just started competing this year. Back into to a gainer, full off to the side. Reagan again, she's so strong at this event. So that fall that we saw earlier was an unexpected mishap, but I know that the team will rebound in the last event. So with Wilson's 9.05, Yale scores currently at a 47.925. I probably figured that might just be a little higher from Reagan which means they'll still be in the, in the 48 range. Their, their average coming into today was just a 48.175 on the beam, so still they could even be around their average, which proves how high of a ceiling Yale is on that beam. As Brooke Donabedi and underway on the floor, the junior from the state of Washington. And that was a beautiful opening pass we saw from Brooke. I love seeing that front tumbling mixed with that back tumbling that she performed. At home in the last meet a couple of weeks ago, a 9-9 season high on the floor. And again, Temple still counting Juliana Rollins, 9-0-5, but that could go by the wayside if Donna Bedian finishes the way that she starts. You know, she's such a performer on this event. I love the intricate choreography that she has. She flirts with the audience. She plays with her team. This is a type of flurry team that not only judges, but fans that I look for, textbook college gymnastics on the floor exercise. <laughs> you can see her wink over at that judge. Hopefully it will do her well as she gives her another strong pass. And a huge front double full. That will definitely score in the 9-8s, possibly even higher. Such a great finish for Temple. For a Temple team that has struggled on the floor this season. I mean, Coach Nilsson said to you earlier, this is a day where kind of things change and turn the corner, look to build, and put together team high scores across the board. Well, I think they might have just done that. They've already posted a new season high on the vault, and they're second best on the bars. And I must say, I did say earlier that Juliana competed two passes, but she actually competed three. So again, that low 9-0 score that we saw, I'm not sure where the judges got that from. Maybe it's an error. That was definitely better than the 9-0 routine. The but good news is for Temple either way, it's going to be a strong floor score, and that's going to do it for the third rotation here. Yale will go to the floor on the home rotation. Temple to finish on the beam. We'll talk to you and see you in a moment here on ESPN+. Plus. It's the home rotation, so Yale will go to the floor after this. Temple, after a new season high, 48.575 on the floor, they will go to the beam, which has been their strongest event of the season. Both of these teams very much in the middle of their competitive schedule this year. Yale will be back at home here at the John J. Lee Amphitheater next Sunday as they welcome Bridgeport and Southern Connecticut State for the Tonnery Invitational. Temple, on the other hand, will be on the road, yep, back again for a couple of more meets. They'll travel to Towson on the 10th of February with North Carolina State and Pitt. And then GW on the 17th with North Carolina. Also, Yale will be in that event, that meet as well. And then Temple will be back at home in Philadelphia on the 19th, North Carolina State, along with GW and Penn. We'll recap the beam and floor scores for Temple and Yale, and then we'll see the fourth in just a moment here as you're watching a presentation of Women's College Gymnastics on ESPN+. Moments away from the fourth rotation here in New Haven, Connecticut. Temple leading 146.075 to Yale's 
bunch of new season highs in the last rotation for both teams. For Temple, you had Madison Durunda put together a season best 9675 and that big 985 from Renee Shugman that blows the or actually me that ties her new season high that's really one of her best events and then on the beam Emma Mangia Capri a new season best 97 Claire Q new season best with a 98 and yeah it's going to set the table for a very interesting finish to this I know for Yale, a little off the pace right now with a little over a point, 1.2 almost behind. But really, it's about their standards right now, Paris. You, you just want to finish the way that you want. And for them, this Yale team that's also struggled on the floor, maybe a chance to get back going again. Absolutely. Yeah, they just want to finish strong. They came to the competition with the mindset of going 24 for 24. So at the very least, why not go six for six on floor? They can definitely do that with this floor squad, and that's what I'm going to be looking and expecting from the Yale Bulldogs. Now, we did notice, by the way, during that last break that the coaching staff for Temple, they're having the same questions like we are about Juliana Rowland. Her 9.05, that definitely was not or didn't perceive to be a 9.05. We're going to get more, we hope to get more answers. And in terms of how their rotation had gone, it might have improved their score slightly. It would be dropping a Summer Ruskies 9.525, but even then for Temple, it's a new season high in the floor. They've already got a season high in the vault as well today. And now they're trying to go three of four with the second best in the bars as we send it over to the beam now. Renee Shugman, who certainly is all full of confidence after a great floor routine. Shugman, who's gone as high as a 9.85 on the beam this season. And that is a difficult connection that we just saw. A front arrow to a front arrow to one leg to immediate arrow best. Extremely difficult. She does take a pause, so I'm sure the judges might take a deduction off of that, but that is extremely, extremely difficult. Yep. Some, something you'd see on the elite side of the sport. Her beam best came in the season opening meet when the team scored a 194-225 at Pitt. And a strong dismount back one and a half. That is not easy to land. As you can see again, when she comes around to plant her feet on the ground, she's not able to see exactly. So it's almost like playing a guessing game. And she guessed a heck of a job with that stuck dismount. I mean, she's putting together a quality meet today at a 9.625 in the vault, and then what could be a competition best, 9.85 on the floor. Obviously, Yale will certainly have something to say about that as we'll get the first look today of the first year from Michigan, Lauren Holt. Scored a season best on the floor a couple of weeks ago at North Carolina, 9.675. And a great opening pass, front double full. Now we know how good this floor team can be for Yale. Last year, their season high was a 49. They averaged over a 48 per meet. Similar to Temple, kind of low starts, low numbers to begin this season, but they're hoping for a change in fortune here this afternoon. Strong second pass. You know, I might take up on that offer, this music. With this music, I might take these headsets off. Well, happy days, Paris, because it's been frigid outside, so we need something to get us feeling good <laughs> yeah. about ourselves. And this also could very well do it. I love the choreography. Well, if you give me any earth, wind, and fire any day of the week, you, you've got my vote. Such a great leadoff routine from the Kuyaki to the music, to the tumbling passes. A great Rudy to finish this strong routine off with. You know, Coach Andy, he does say that balance beam on the bars 
is Joe stronger events, but I think Floor is becoming a stronger event for this team as well. They're certainly hoping that it is. Their average season of 47-5, which is seventh of eighth in teams in Gymnastics East. But off to a good start, and a, as you said earlier, a chance to play to the home crowd, and they were feeling it like us here at the broadcast position as Madison Durunda now back on the beam. Durunda also having a very good meet. Uh, nine six seven five on the floor moments ago, and nine seven on the bars. And the strong triple acro series. That's not something you always see. Back answering to two layouts that both extremely difficult. She has such such exceptional extensions in her jumps and leaps. Something the judges definitely look for. She's always an expected scorer for Temple. Deronda averages over a 9.75. And we're probably going to get uh, some around there again. And another strong dismount. Here's another look at that dismount. A cartwheel back one and a half. That's actually very difficult to do. It's not easy to, it's, it's not easy to do a back one and a half from a cartwheel. That's almost like doing a standing back one and a half. It's fair to say we're starting to see the old Temple coming back here to play today. I know early season you're working on a lot of things, and it's a bold gamble by Josh Nielsen to change his lineup as much as he did today, but sometimes when you play the risk, you get rewarded. He is certainly getting rewarded by the athletes he's put out today. As we go over to the floor, Sarah Wilson, who's certainly looking to bounce back from her fall that she had on beam in the last rotation. And a strong opening pass. Her choreography is so bold, so fearless. And that is the type of gymnast and the type of person that Sarah is. We well, need that confidence, of course. Someone that is expected to put in the big numbers. Someone that has been getting talked a lot about. And then when you have that little, little slip, it could always creep into your mind, but she's certainly putting that by the wayside here. I also mentioned, by the way, Reagan Walker's score just came in from the beam last rotation. 9-4 even with the fall. That does actually up Yale's numbers a bit from that last rotation. And a strong double pike to finish off with Lick if that she's enjoying this routine as she should. It's so fun. Great finish there from Wilson. Comes after Lauren Holtz, season and career high of a 9.675. So just passing the baton from one to the next. Here's another look at that last pass. A beautiful double pike to finish off with. Yale were chasing about a point and two tenths coming into this rotation, and they're certainly they're trying to find ways to chip back here as Juliana Rowland on the beam. Rowland has gone as high as a 9.825 on the season, and we're still very curious about why her score on the floor was so low, but. Oh, she's not letting it bother her. Hey, she's not letting it bother her, nor is she letting these judges take anything off. That was a strong acro series. Just such great form. Beautiful execution from her leg extension to her toe point to the way she positions her arms and her beam choreography. She was second team in East Atlantic Gymnastics last year on the beam. Easily capable of throwing up the big score, and we could be seeing one here in just a few moments. We should be with this routine. Exceptional from every skill, whether it's an acro series or a leap or a jump, she just, she exudes confidence. Can she stick? And she does! Whoa, that was huge. That is such a big routine from the grad student out of New Jersey. Arguably one of the 
the best routine, in my opinion, that we've seen so far today. Such a tough landing, by the way. Just found the floor at the last moment, and yet another stick. And Paris, I think between Yale and Temple, every yes. every one has been a stick thus yes. far. Yes, the balance Love beam that. dismounts have treated us well today. And after Hanna Strauss put up a very strong score on the beam of a 9.7 last rotation, she goes here on the floor for Yale. Another athlete who can put together a big mark. She's gone as high as a 9.8 on the floor this season. That was a very difficult two and a half punch front. One thing about Hannah, she knows how to twist and she does it so well. Again, she's tiny, but she is mighty. That 9-8 came at North Carolina at Carmichael Arena, which is a very big facility as well. And of course, facing good competition there, but held her own in her first year. I love the extensions in her jumps and her leaps. Such a beautiful gymnast. Lauren Holt started the rotation with the 9-6-7-5. Strauss trying to keep that going here. She does. And a strong finish. Beautiful double pipe pass to end this beautiful routine out. Paris, the floor teams are coming to play today for both. They are, and this should and better score well. This was a great routine. Here's another look at that dismount. Double Pike knows where that round is, lands up strong. Ashley Glynn to the beam now. Beautiful combination. And Glynn, you know, getting more work here today. It only competed on the vault in the previous meets, but going three thus far, had a 9.825 in the bars in her last event. And it's interesting, Coach said that in practice they do so well, but in competition they don't compete well on the balance beam. And we're not seeing that today. No, we're not. There, it, it, you know, it was almost as if this team only practices on being the way they are just looking so strong at this event. She has a couple wobbles, but she is staying strong to fight in this routine. Yeah, no problems from Temple thus far. Madison Deronda and Juliana Rowland each 9.825s. And there another it is. stuck dismount. Again, between Yale and Temple, everyone has just been sticking these dismounts. We've been treated here today to such a good competition, especially on the back half. Bang. You can see that in slow motion, beautiful body extension, pencil straight in the air, beautiful execution. Sarah Wilson's floor in 9.75, by the way. Yale you know, creeping together. And I think for them, it's very much you want new highs. You want a new platform, new foundation. I don't think they're satisfied with their average at a 47.5. You can bet that when we get the score coming in from Hannah Strauss, it's going to be right up there. As now Megan Bruek, the first year from Cincinnati to compete. Great opening pass. And she doesn't just do this floor routine, but she performs it. Mm. That's what the floor exercise is all about. But performing these routines. Should be said also, maybe something about the new Leos that Yale are wearing. Maybe that brings some new magic to the floor. Can we talk about them? Mm. I am a sucker for black Leos. I've always wanted to compete in one. Never had the chance to. So to see Yale out here in these beautiful Leos, I'm vicariously living through them. Yeah, very strategically, by the way, on social media, didn't post this up until maybe a couple hours before the meet started. So wanted to perhaps couple, throw a little little Easter eggs in there, a couple surprises. <laughs> and maybe perhaps the magic that they were looking for on the floor, they might have gotten them here in these Leos. Just one more pass to come from Megan Bruick. And a strong pass, she just bounced. And that jump. A 
Oh, this was such a great routine. And it comes right after Hannah Strauss's 9.75. Talk about consistency, by the way, for Yale. I mean, even with Lauren Holtz 9.675, these are some big numbers from Yale, some that we haven't seen from them all year. Brooke Donna Bedian to go on the beam now. Which Temple are putting up some huge numbers on their own. Got Donna Runda and Roland each with a 9.825. Ashley Glynn a 9.675. Temple hoping to drop that with Renee Shugman's 9.725. But Donna Bedian, who was outstanding on the beam, fourth in the East Atlantic Gymnastics League on average with a 9.825. And that is an extremely difficult combination. Front arrow to two back handstand step outs. And she can put up a huge number, by the way. 9 9 last year, a high on the beam. Scored a 9 9 5 on the floor as well. One of the few veterans on this roster, the junior, leading by example here. And an extremely difficult jump. When she tilts her head back, she loses sight of the balance beam. That was that dismount back one and a half, and another stuck dismount. She had to fight that one. It's a she little did. bit low, but she, <laughs> she still did. pulled it off. Here's another look at that dismount round off back one and a half. She doesn't get the height that we've seen some some other gymnasts, but. Again, she lands it well. She sticks it. Can't get any better than that. Riley Meeks to go on the floor now for Yale. She had a fight through that beam routine that she had a couple of minutes ago. As you're seeing in the bottom, some of the emphasis that the judges are looking for on the floor. Meeks always a performer in her own right, trying to play to everybody here at Lee Amphitheater. She is, and the opening of that pass is a tribute of her career. That music was a compulsory mu music of the early 2000s that gymnasts had to dance to. Riley this season has gone as high as a 9.725. That came in that meet at North Carolina a few weeks ago. Yale have been oh so good on the floor and Megan Bruex score just came in a team best 9.775. They're not missing today. They are not. They are coming out here and they are performing. She was getting ready for that last pass. Find a backhand spring double pack. Oh, and she just over rotates it, pulls it a little too hard. Yeah, you can see it on her face. Not happy about that. Because everything was looking oh so good up until that point. Absolutely. Such a strong opening pass. Gonna get her second look of the day of Hannah Stallings. Just she and her sister Sarah competed on bars only. Hannah, one of the better all-arounders in the East Atlantic Gymnastics League. It's average uh, 38.35, but she's very good on the beam. And she fought to stay on. That was a hard combination, but she did wobble in both skills. And again, due to Coach Nielsen making some changes with the lineup, getting some athletes some experience, the likes of even they are veterans as sophomores, the Stalling sisters not going for all three or four today. But still hoping for a big mark here. This is the last score to be potentially counted for Temple. And with that fall, Temple will look to count every routine. Yeah, it's gonna be Ashley that Glenn's way. nine, six, seven, five. So 48, eight, seven, five on the beam. 
still a little bit above their season average. And a great, strong finish. Not the routine she was looking and hoping for, but nonetheless, Temple did a phenomenal job on this event as a whole. Paris, question for you. If you're someone that competes on the all-around on a regular basis and now only competes in two, how much does that change your, your routine, how you go about your business? I know you treat every routine as it is, but if you're expected to go four for four, you don't get all that much time to wait around. You don't, and I think, again, we talked about that waiting and patience earlier. It's kind of hard to open the gate in the competition and have such a long break before you compete again. So it's not easy going from being an all-arounder to an event specialist, but sometimes you need those breaks. Physically, you need those breaks. Sherry Wong on the floor for Yale. This is their anchor. <laughs> She's the anchor for a reason. That was a huge double pike. I think the highest that we've seen the whole day. And remember, Yale need a big score. They don't want to count the fall of Riley Meeks. We've yet to see her number posted thus far outside of what's been a very good day on the floor for the Bulldogs. There's that second pass. Brown and back answering, double tuck. You saw that look on her face, right? She knew it she that she put it. it to the floor. She knew it. She's the anchor for Yale for a reason. Temple, by the way, are in 194.95. That is a new season high for them as a team. That's by some distance as well. Back one and a half punch leg. And a phenomenal job by Sherry. The that, Bulldogs are pumped as they should be. That is huge for huge Yale routine. because you know it, it's so tough for Meeks having that ball at the end of her last pass. You wanted to have a good day on floor, especially when you're at home. Well, they're going to have a good day on floor. So this is an exhibition for Amanda Schuerman, the freshman from Old Bridge, New Jersey, as we said. Temple are in on the beam, three nine eight two fives. That's a good day for any team. Three eight nine two fives. Brooke Donabedi and Madison Darunda and Juliana Roland all there. Renee Shugman's nine seven two five and the nine six seven five from Ashley Glynn. They drop Hannah Stallings eight nine seven five, which is kind of hard for Temple because you expected maybe that number to go up a little bit more, and we're talking perhaps a a 49 plus on the beam. You know, this Temple team, they came to the competition with one goal. That was to attack, to win, and just simply compete as they practice. And that was a huge just, I mean, literally the height she got in that gainer was big. This team should be proud today. Definitely put up some huge numbers, some huge scores, and some big routines on the balance beam. Well, we're seeing Riley Meeks' mark of an 8925. The good news is that's going to get dropped. The better news is for Yale, I think if, ever, if my math is going to be right on the score expected that we should get on Cherry Wong, this will be a new high on the floor for the team and not all that far from their season best as a team. They will probably not reach the 194.25, but they might be looking close to a 193. Actually, it probably should be over a 193. But you know, we'll, we'll recap we'll recap this, uh, kind of how this meet went in a moment, Paris, as you're seeing Temple celebrate a good day for them. But I think for both teams, there's a, there's a lot of positives to take away from the d today. Okay, so we're going to step aside one more time. When we come back, we'll have our final thoughts and takeaways as well as the announcements of the top places in each event. So stay with us here. Temple will win this meet, but a good day across the board for both Temple and Yale. 
final here from New Haven, Connecticut. Temple will win the dual meet with a season high as a team 194.95. Yale also with a new season high, a 193.6. After a very impressive floor for the Bulldogs to finish with a 48.7, which is also a new season best. Temple with what a beam team that was, a 48.875. Not their best mark of the season, but it was awfully close to that. And Paris, I think as we, we look back at some of these routines, I think this is a big old check mark for Yale. They didn't get the 24 for 24. They did have to count one fall and one on the vault where it was a large step out. All things considered, though, I mean, there's a lot more consistency, and I think that's Absolutely. what Coach Lease was really looking for today. Yale had definitely improved in their consistency. It's still early in their season. They still have room for, for growth. And it's important not to peak too early. You want to peak during championship season, during, during the championships. So just knowing that Yale can still grow to be even better than what they've been today, that's a big sign of moving forward. You're seeing some of the Temple beam routines. Madison Durondo with a 9.825. That's a season best. Juliana Rowland ties her season best as we'll actually now send it over to our public address announcer who will announce the top three finishers for each event. Madison Brooks. And Mackenzie Aresta. In first place on vault with a 9.8 from Temple, Anna Hill. Results on the uneven parallel bars. In third place with a 9.8 from Yale, Sarah Wilson. Tied for first place with a 9.825, both from Temple, Ashley Glenn and Sarah Stallings. On balance beam, we have a three-way tie for first place which we will settle with a foot race out in the parking lot after the meet. All three with a 9825. All three from Temple. Brooke Donabedian. Juliana Rowland. And Madison Durunda. Floor exercise. Tied for second place, both with a 9775. From Temple, Brooke Donabedian. And from Yale, Megan Bruick. And in first place with a 9.85. From Temple, Renee Shookman. In the all-around results, only one person competing, and that's Yale Sarah Wilson with a 38.175. Final team results for Yale, 193.6. And for Temple, 194.95. Thank you for your attendance today. Your Bulldogs will be back at home for their next home meet on Sunday, February 12th at 1 p.m. Please drive home safely and have a good evening. 
So that will do it for us. You just heard Kevin Lazo, our public address announcer, with the top three finishers for all three Anna, or for all events. Anna Hill winning the vault with the 9-8 for Temple. Sarah Stallings and Ashley Glynn tying on the bars, the 9-8-2-5. A three-way tie for Beam all on Temple and a 9-8-2-5. Madison Durana, Juliana Rowland, and Brooke Donabedian and Renee Shugman with a 9-8-5 on the floor to win for Temple with Sarah Wilson being the only gymnast on the all-around with a 38-175. That's going to do it for us, for our entire production team, for my partner Paris McGee Jr. I'm JJ Duke saying so long from New Haven, Connecticut as Temple wins this dual meet 194.95 to 193.6. We'll talk to you all next time. This has been a presentation of ESPN.